we're now going to look at an application of multiple integrals to probability. Uh, just to start things off, let's th think about one random variable. So the probability density function f of a continuous random variable x is a function f such that it's positive and its integral over the entire real line is 1. So then the question about what is the probability of your random variable taking on some value between a and b, that could be answered by computing the integral of your probability density function over the interval a, b. So that is the probability that x, the random value of your random variable, takes on a value between a and b is just given by the integral of a function of a single variable. We can extend this idea to two random variables. So the joint probability density function of a pair of random variables, capital X and capital Y, is a function of two variables which is positive and has an integral of one where you're integrating over the entire plane. The probability that your pair of random variables takes on a value inside the region D is found by integrating your probability density function over that region D. So let's go ahead and do an example. So we've got uh, two people, Xavier and Yolanda, and they both have classes that end at noon, and they agree to meet every day after class. They arrive at a coffee shop independently. Xavier's arrival time is given by capital X. Yolanda's arrival, arrival time is given by capital Y. So those are our random variables. Capital X is Xavier's arrival time. Capital Y is Yolanda's arrival time. And we're going to measure them in minutes after 12 o'clock or minutes after noon. The individual density functions are given as follows. So we use the variable X for Xavier and the variable Y for Yolanda just so you can tell them apart, but also F1 is Xavier's density function, probability density function. And so it says that, you know, it, it's zero if X is less than zero. So in other words, Xavier's never going to arrive before noon because the class ends then. But after noon, the density is given by E to the negative X. So he's more likely to arrive early than he is late. And Yolanda's is given by zero again if x is less than zero. Um, but for y between zero and ten, it's given by one over fifty times y. So Yolanda will only arrive within the first ten minutes. She'll never arrive after that. So she'll arrive within the first ten minutes and the probability density function is given by one over fifty times y. So just in parentheses down below, it gives you a bit of an explanation as to where these come from. Xavier arrives sometimes after noon, more likely to arrive promptly than late. Yolanda always arrives by 1210 and is more likely to arrive later than promptly. After Yolanda arrives, she will wait for up to half an hour for Xavier. So this isn't present in the, these functions. These functions are, um, have already dealt with those uh, that parenthetical description that I've written above. This is some extra information. So Yolanda, after she arrives, she'll wait up to a half an hour for Xavier. But Xavier will not wait for her. So once he arrives, if she's not there, he's gone. So under these conditions, what is the probability that they will meet? So let's go ahead and jot a few things down. X and Y, they are independent random variables. So they're independent. So that means that the joint density function is given by, and we'll write it as a function f of x, y. It's just the product of these two density functions, f1 of x, f2 of y. And so that's given by this piecewise defined function, 1 over 50 y e to the negative x. And that is if x is bigger than or equal to 0, and 0 is less than y is less than 10, and 0 otherwise. So there's the joint density function. We've got some conditions to, to look after. So uh, these are our conditions. 
So after Yolanda arrives, she'll wait for up to half an hour for Xavier, but he won't wait for her. So what that means is the following. Xavier won't wait. So we're trying to figure out that domain we want to integrate over. So we're trying to figure out what is the probability that we'll meet. So we need to integrate over the values of the random variables which cause them to meet. When will they meet? Well, Xavier won't wait for Yolanda. So that means they won't meet unless, well, if he won't wait, then Yolanda had better arrive before him. So Yolanda's arrival time has to be smaller than Xavier's arrival time. Or in other words, we need that x minus y is bigger than or equal to zero. So that's our first condition. What else do we have? We have that Yolanda will wait up to 30 minutes. And so that means they won't meet unless Xavier has to arrive within 30 minutes of Yolanda's arrival time. So x better be less than y plus 30. Or in other words, x minus y has to be less than or equal to 30. So there's our other condition. And so now let's get a sketch of this region. The region we are integrating over, in other words, the set of all points for the random variables x and y, the set of all values for x and y which will allow them to meet are the following. We need x minus y to be bigger than zero. So I'm going to draw the line x equals y. And we need x minus y to be less than 30. So that's a parallel line, but passes through the point 30 here. The y value, so there's our x and our y. y value, so Yolanda, we have that she won't arrive past 1210. So y has to be less than 10 for them to meet. And so there's the set of all pairs x and y, the set of all values for our random variables, which will allow them to meet each other. So this is, I'll fill in the last one here, this is x minus y is equal to 30. That's that right boundary curve. And then this one was that x equals to y. And that top one was y equals 10. So that's what's going to allow them to meet. So that's the region we're going to integrate over. So the probability that x, y is in this domain D, so call that D, that's the probability that they will have a chance of meeting is given by the integral over this domain D of the probability density function, f of x, y, dA. And so what is that? That's the integral over, and now we can think about is this you know, which, which variable is best to integrate with respect to first, y or x? Horizontally simple, or is it vertically simple? When I look at this, I think if I start drawing vertical lines, the upper curve is going to change from y, x equals y to y equals 10. But if I draw a horizontal line, I have a left curve and a right curve, and those don't change. So that means I should integrate with respect to x first. At least it should make things easier. And so we're going to integrate with respect to x first. x is going to go from y, so we're looking at expressing everything in terms of y. So x is going to go from y to 30 plus y. And then y is going to go from 0 to 10. And the function we're integrating is f of xy, so that's 1 over 50y e to the negative x, and that's our first variable in our integration was dx, and then dy. So there is our integral 
that's going to represent the probability that they meet. So we can go ahead and we can integrate with respect to x first and then plug things in and then we get a polynomial integrate with respect to y. So the details of the actual calculation of the iterated integrals I will leave to you. It's uh, fairly straightforward. And what we get is a result of 1 over 50 times 1 minus e to the negative 30 and then 1 minus 11 e to the negative 10. This is approximately 0 0.020. That's a probability. So that means, in terms of a percentage, let's move the decimal place over twice. This tells us that it's a 2% chance they will meet. And that is why this is a tragic love story. It is very unlikely that these two, given the conditions upon how they will meet, will actually meet. That probability is quite low. And so now we can see where the tragic nature of this love story comes in. So one last thing I want to point out is we had these integrals that what we call first moments and second moments in physics, those same integrals come up in different areas. So for example, these first moments, we see them here coming up in probability and they're the expected values. So if we have two random variables with a joint destiny function f, then we can talk about their expected values. What is the expected value for the x random variable? What is the expected value for the y random variable? Those expected values are given by these integrals, and these are those first moment integrals that we had for concepts in physics as well. They come up here, and they're the expected value integrals. All right, that's it for this section on the applications of double integrals. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.